With a height of 828 meters and 163 floors, the Burj Khalifa is the world's tallest structure. While it is exceptional in every way, it is the unique design of the Burj Khalifa that truly distinguishes it. Welcome to Planet Lux, and in this video we'll take a look at how Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest skyscraper, is built. Let's start with the architecture. The architecture incorporates a three-lobed footprint, which is an abstraction of the Hymenocallis flower. The tower is made up of three elements that are arranged around a central core. The modular Y-shaped structure with setbacks along each of its three wings provides an inherently stable structure and good floor plates for residential. As the tower spirals upward, the cross-section of the tower is gradually reduced by 26 helical levels. At the top, the central core emerges and culminates in a sculpt spire. The Arabian Gulf is best seen from a Y-shaped floor plan. From the ground or in the air, the Burj Khalifa resembles the onion domes common in Islamic architecture. Wind Tunnel Testing Over 40 wind tunnel tests were performed on Burj Khalifa to investigate the effects of wind on the tower and its occupants. These included preliminary tests to validate Dubai's wind climate, large structural analysis models and facade pressure tests, and microclimate analysis of the effects at terraces and around the tower base. Even the temporary conditions on the tower during the construction stage were tested to ensure safety at all times. The stack effect, also known as the chimney effect, is a phenomenon that affects super tall building design and is caused by changes in pressure and temperature with height. Special studies were conducted on the Burj Khalifa to determine the magnitude of the changes that would be required in the building's design. Floor Plan the Armani Hotel Dubai will be located on the concourse level through level 8 as well as levels 38 and 39. The luxurious one- and two-bedroom Armani residences will be located on levels 9 through 16. Ultra-luxury residences can be found on floors 45 through 108. Except for level 122, which houses Atmosphere, and level 124, which houses the tower's public observatory, the remaining floors are occupied by corporate suites. The tower has been divided into sections for the convenience of homeowners, with exclusive sky lobbies on levels 43, 76 and 123, featuring state-of-the-art fitness facilities including jacuzzis on level 43 and 76. The sky lobbies on 43 and 76 also have swimming pools and a recreational room that can be used for gatherings and lifestyle events, providing an unparalleled experience. Both pools open to the outside, allowing residents to swim from inside to outside balcony. Other amenities for residents include a residence library and Lafayette Gourmet, a gourmet convenience store and resident meeting place. For guests and visitors, valet parking is available. Interiors The interior design of the public areas of the Bush Khalifa was also completed by the Chicago office of Skidmore, Owings and Merrill LLP which was led by award-winning designer Nada Andrick. Glass, stainless steel and polished dark stones are used, as well as silver travertine flooring, Venetian stucco walls, handmade rugs and stone flooring. The interior design was inspired by local culture while keeping the building's status as a global icon and residence in mind. Artwork the Burj Khalifa and the surrounding Mohammed bin Rashid Boulevard are adorned with over 1,000 pieces of art by prominent Middle Eastern and international artists. Imar commissioned many of the pieces to pay tribute to the spirit of global harmony. The pieces were chosen to represent the international collaboration that is the Burj Khalifa by connecting cultures and communities. By the way, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Construction Excavation work for the Burj Khalifa began in January 2004, and the building passed many important milestones on its way to becoming the tallest man-made structure the world has ever seen. Burj Khalifa became the world's tallest freestanding structure in just 1,325 days, after excavation work began in January 2004. Construction Highlights The concrete and steel foundation, which features 192 piles buried more than 50 meters deep, was built with over 45,000 cubic meters of concrete, weighing more than 110,000 tons. The construction of the Burj Khalifa required 330,000 cubic meters of concrete and 39,000 tons of steel rebar as well as 22 million man-hours. 
Burj Khalifa's exterior cladding began in May 2007 and was completed in September 2009. More than 380 skilled engineers and on-site technicians worked on the massive project. During the initial stage of installation, the team moved at the rate of about 20 to 30 panels per day, eventually reaching 175 panels per day. With a height of 512 meters, the tower set a world record for the highest installation of an aluminum and glass facade. The total weight of aluminum used on Burj Khalifa is equivalent to five A380 planes, and the total length of stainless steel bullnose fins is 293 times the height of Paris's Eiffel Tower. In November 2007, the highest reinforced concrete core walls were pumped from the ground level using 80 MPA concrete, 601 meter vertical height. This broke the previous pumping record on a building of 470 meters on Tampei 101, the world's second tallest tower, as well as the previous world record for vertical pumping of 532 meters in 1994 for an extension to the River del Garda hydroelectric power plant. During the pumping to this level, the concrete pressure was nearly 200 bars. By February 2005, the pile and raft foundation works for the tower had been completed. Following that, construction of the tower's superstructure began in April 2005, and the tower was completed to its desired position in January 2009. For structural work, a one-of-a-kind three-day cycle was used. It was decided to use a transportation system with a large capacity of equipment and the best building materials. The optimal formwork system was provided to meet the tower construction requirements as well as the tower's height. During the tower's construction, logistic plans were created. Concrete work preparation. The concrete testing and quality program was the primary focus for the tower's successful construction. These programs began shortly after the development of mixed design criteria and lasted until the end of the construction process. All mechanical properties of concrete, such as modulus of elasticity, tensile strength and compressive strength were calculated. Durability tests were carried out. These tests included an initial surface absorption test, as well as a 30-minute surface absorption test. A creep and shrinkage test setup was created for various types of concrete mix designs. Permeability tests, such as rapid chloride, were carried out. A heat hydration test was carried out. This test includes cube analysis and a full-scale setup to measure the effect of heat of hydration on the large-scale concrete elements with dimensions greater than 1 meter. Pump simulation tests were carried out in order to achieve concrete pumpability over a long distance. In summary, all of these tests were carried out to confirm the construction sequence of large-sized elements and to develop curing plants while taking daily and seasonal temperature fluctuations into account techniques employed to achieve a three-day cycle. To build a tower of this size in such a short time frame, for concrete work, a three-day cycle program was developed. For higher-level construction, an auto-climbing formwork system was used. High-performance concrete was used to meet the requirements for high durability, high modulus, high strength and pumping. A simple drop-head formwork system was developed to provide a semi-automatic dismantling and assembling process of formwork while keeping labor requirements as low as possible. Superstructure construction sequence The ACS project was divided into three sections. The first segment included building the center core wall and the second segment included building the wing wall. The third segment involved the building of three tower wings. First, the main central core walls were built, and then the center core slab was built. Following that, the wing wall was built in tandem with the wing flat slab. Furthermore, nose columns were built alongside the flat slab at the nose area. A series of braced walls at each mechanical level connected the main central core walls to the nose columns. Because the reinforcing bars clogged the connections, the braced walls were built with structural steel members. As a result, structural steel members were used to shorten the construction time and increase joint rigidity. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Would you like to visit Burj Khalifa? Let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.